Hey, what's up guys? This is Rich again for another edition of Learning with Rich. So for today's topic, I'm going to discuss about creating logical systems. Okay, so let's get started. So for the data sets that we will be using for this exercise in our Revit MEP, so we will be going back to this website from Cybex. Okay, so you just need to key in here Cybex. It is a very nice website, very good website if you want to buy your training materials. And from here, after you got your training material, you can download the exercises files from this website. Okay, so our topic is about uh, Rabbit MEP. So I'm going to select Architecture and Design. And I'm going to look for Autodesk Revit and Revit MEP and then you can see here the titles in Autodesk Revit MEP that they uh, already published so from here you can buy their uh, training material so I already have this one so I'm gonna select this and then I'm going to scroll down to download the exercise file that we need for this training Okay, so it's on chapter 9. So I want you guys to click down, click to download. Okay, so we'll be downloading the exercises file for our training, which is creating logical system. Okay, in this case, I already downloaded the uh, chapter 9 from their website. So I'm now going to open it. Okay, so this is my MEP. This is the... Chapter 9 exercises. So let me just open chapter 9 underscore data set. Okay, so the version is 2016 and then I'm using 2017. So make sure if you're going to open these uh, exercises files, so make sure your version is 2016 above. Okay. So you will not be op uh, you, you will not be able to open this in 2015 below. All right. So as you can see, this is the model from that chapter nine underscore data set. Okay. So in this exercise, they already in, uh, specify or created the space here. Okay. I already have an exercise on how to create space, so you can check out that exercise. Now for this one. So we are going to create logical system for, let's say, for our HVAC, okay? All right? So creating and managing systems is the key to getting the Autodesk Revit MEP 2017 software to work for you, okay? So systems represent the transfer of information between uh, families. So whenever you create your ducting, so you do not just move or drag your ducting to overlap to another duct. So it needs to be connected for you to be able to create the correct system, logical system, which is what I'm going to show you later on. Okay. So these logical systems are available for any ductwork or pipework system type you may have in your model. Electrical systems are also part of Revit MEP and we will be having that exercise uh, soon. Actually, I already have that exercise so you can check out the, the videos that I have created. Okay. By the way, why are the systems important? Okay. Like what I have said earlier, so systems are the logical connection between elements in the model. So they are the link between the air terminal, the VAB box in HVAC, and the air handler. And they represent an additional layer of information above the physical connections made with ducts and pipes, known as the engineering information. So, without these systems, ducts and pipes act only as connection between two points. Okay? So, we need to create a system. So, systems are needed to generate the bigger picture and allow to manage the elements on a building-wide level. Okay? So, let me just start our exercise. Okay? 
So let's go to our exercise. So for our first step, so I'm going to select the ceiling mech here, one dash ceiling mech, and then I'm going to load the air terminal and then the equipment that we will be using in this exercise. All right. So to load the family from the insert tab, load family. Okay, and then you just go to the chapter 9 folder that you have downloaded. And we will be loading our uh, supply diffuser and then our VAB uh, mechanical equipment. So you just select both and then after that you select open. Okay, so that family is 2015 version. Okay, so now that you have loaded it, so let us now load our air terminal first okay so from the systems tab you can see there's an air terminal so i'm going to select the air terminal and then from the properties this type of family actually is a, a phase based family okay so that's why as you notice, you cannot see your air terminal because the placement here is set to place on vertical face. So if you are going to load a face-based family, so make sure place on face is selected. Okay, so I'm going to select the place on face and then hover again my pointer to the ceiling. So you will now be able to see it. Okay. So once you place your air terminal, it will follow the height of your ceiling, okay? So for this one, I'm just going to pick here. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And then after that, I select here modify. So I'm going to teach you how to create system manually. Right, so later on, I'm going to show you how to create the system automatically. Okay, so after I place the air terminal, so the next thing that you're that I'm going to do is to uh, place the equipment. Okay, so I'm going to place the equipment that we will be using for this exercise, the one that we just loaded a while ago. Okay, so I'm going to select again the systems tab. So there's the mechanical equipment, so I select this one. And then there's our VAB. And then as you can see, at the moment, we are not able to see the equipment because the offset there is zero. So I'm just going to change this one. Okay. I'll change this to uh, 10 feet. Okay. So 10 feet. So there you go. So this is now our equipment. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to place it somewhere here. So actually, the placement is not that critical for this exercise. So I'll just place it somewhere here. So I pick. There you go. Okay, so you can adjust the elevation by changing the elevation offset here in the properties. And it is a good idea to set the elevation prior to placement if you are in a reflected ceiling plan view. Or you may not see the BAB box when it is placed. Okay, a while ago, you are not able to see it, right? Because the offset is zero. Now that we have changed it to 10 feet, so at least we are now able to see our uh, BAB box. So after I place one, I'm now going to select or modify. It is a very simple exercise, so I just want you to learn the basic of creating a logical system. Okay? So now that the VAB box and diffusers are in place, so I'm now going to make them part of a system. Okay, so to do that, this is a standard way of creating a system. So you can do this also to your fire protection, to your piping system, and of course here on your HVAC system. Okay, so to do that, the first thing that you're going to do, of course, make sure the family has connectors. So in Revit Archit architecture, we do not place connectors to the families. But here in MEP, it's very crucial to place your connectors to your family. So let me just change my view to 3D view. And as you can see, if I'm going to click one of the air terminal, you will notice this point here, right? So that is actually the connector. Okay, so this is the connector. See? 
Now, what type of connector? So, if you select that and then check the properties here, you will see the system classification here. It is a supply air. Okay? Or another option, you can click the family and then you can select your edit family. So, it will open up the family editor and then you can see the connector, right? So, you just need to click that connector and then you will see what type of system is that. So, it is a supply air. Alright, so that's how you check the connector of the family by checking out the properties. Okay, so this is very important to your uh, Revit MEP. So make sure you create your family and then you uh, place the connector. Okay, so if I'm going to click the equipment, so you will notice our equipment here contains a lot of connectors. So there's a connector for ducting, there's a connector for piping, okay. And then you also have connector for creating your power, okay? Again, if you want to check out the, the family connector, or I mean the type of connector, you can select the family and then you can select the edit family, okay? Alright, let me just show you quickly. So this is the connector for your electrical. So if I click this one, you will see that it's an electrical connector, okay? So, what about this one? So, this connector is uh, supply air for HVAC. So, this one is ducting. Okay, so that is supply air. So, this two is for your piping. What type of piping? So, I click this one. So, that is hydronic return. The other one is hydronic supply. Okay, so as you can see, you don't need to create the, the family uh in a very difficult way so you don't need to create your family uh, very fancy in Revit MEP. the important here is the connectors okay you put the connectors to the family so that's this uh, that's the important thing okay so i'm now going to close this one okay so Going back to my uh, one dash ceiling max, so I'm now going to create the system. So how to do that? You can select any one of the air terminals. So let's say I'm going to click this one. So after you select that, if that object has connector, you will see this. Create system. Okay? So you will have an idea what type of connector uh, this air terminal has. So it has a duct connector okay so if i'm going to click the equipment here just to show you so you will notice you have three types of uh, connectors here or systems that you'll be able to create why because this equipment has the connector power connector and piping connector that's why you have these three but this air terminal you only have one because you only have one connector Okay, so hopefully you can follow. So I'm going to select one of the air terminal and then I'm going to select duct to create duct system. So I click this. Okay, and then you will be able to specify here the name of your system. Okay, so the system name is supply air and then you can also change here the system name. Okay, so it's up to you. And then you also have an option here, open in system editor. So if you're going to check this one, automatically after you select open, it will open the system editor. So let me show you. So I'm going to check this and then I select OK. And there you go. So you are now on the system editor. Okay, now I'm going to cancel. I'm going to show you the other option. So I'm going to undo one step. Okay, so again, I'm going to select this and then I select the duct here. This time, I'm going to leave this unchecked and then I select OK. So you will notice it will not open the system editor. Now, I want to open the system editor because I want to add the other air terminals to the system as well as selecting this as my equipment. So to do that, there is an option here, uh, edit system. So I'm going to select edit system. And again, this is now your system editor. So add to system automatically is selected. So I'm going to click now the air terminals that I want to be added to my system. So I can also use the window selection. So as you can see, I now have total number of six elements included to my system. And after that, so I'm going to select here, select element, because I want this equipment to be my equipment. 
Okay, I want to select this one. So, I'm going to select this. Let me just check the property. Okay, so as you can see, this is my property. At the moment, there is no system equipment. But, select equipment. I'm going to select this now. Boom. So, you will now see here the equipment. Equipment. And then the elements. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So after that, I'm now going to select Finish Editing System. There you go. So you just created manually your uh, logical system for your HVAC. So it's not that difficult, right? Okay. Now, another thing that you can specify here. So after you create system, there is this browser aside from your project browser, aside from your properties. There is another browser specifically created for your uh, MEP, okay, which is what we call the system browser. To open up the system browser, you just need to right click at the blank space. There's the browsers, and then you can see the system browser here. So I'm going to uh, select this one. And then you will now see the system browser. So this is the system browser and then this is the name of your project. Okay. So the system browser summarizes the mechanical systems currently in the model. So not only the mechanical system but also the piping as well as the electrical. Okay. Okay. You can keep track of all the air and water in the building and see your system totals at a glance. So, but the system browser in Revit MEP tech, uh, takes this idea a step further. It is a live link to the components in the system as well as their parameters. So, you have the full control to modify the air flows, equipment types, and diffuser selection all from this single window okay so like for example as you can see let me just try to adjust this okay so as you can see i have here uh, an assigned four items so if i'm going to expand this one so i have this okay right so i have four so one two three four Okay, so all in this equipment, right? Because like what I have said earlier, if you are going to select this equipment, it has a lots of uh, connectors, right? So there's a connector for supply. You also have connector for hydronic return. You see your hydronic return and hydronic uh, supply as well as your power. Okay, so these four connectors are not yet assigned to a system. One, two, three, four. But the other one is already assigned to the system. Okay. Now, I'm going to minimize this one. I click outside. Now, if I'm going to expand this, so I already have one system on my mechanical. So again, coming from this equipment, and then this is the name of the system, and then these are the components, okay? As you can see, if I click this one, it highlights the uh, supply diffuser that belongs to the system, okay? You can view it by system or by zone, okay? So by zone or systems. I also have an exercise on how to create zones, so you can check out my video. And then by discipline also. So if I want to see only the mechanical, then I can only see the mechanical there, right? So I only have the mechanical. So if I want to include the system piping, so I have uh, piping here. I have two unassigned items to my system piping, okay? Because I never use yet the hydronic return and hydronic supply. So this system browser is very important. So... You can always check out your system browser, okay, to modify or to highlight which elements or which are or which are the elements that is not assigned yet to the system or assigned to the system, okay. Anyway, so th this is how you create your uh, system, your logical system, manually. Okay, 
So, how to create your system uh, automatically, okay? So, to do that, I'm just going to create another uh, set of air terminals. Same uh, place on face. Okay, I'll just create. Actually, it would be better if I just copy it. Anyway, I already placed it. So, I select your mechanical equipment. Okay, let me just place it somewhere here. Alright. Okay. Now, going back here first. So, if you want to generate now your routing, you can use this option from Revit MEP. So, I'm going to select one of the air terminal. And then, there is an option here, generate a placeholder. Okay, the other one is generate layout. So it offers different layout solutions for adding selected equipment and fixtures to HVAC and piping system. But I seldom use this one. Actually, I don't use this in creating of my project. So I only use the generate layout if I just want to show my client a quick way on how the Revit MEP generate the layout and how good it looks like in 3d view okay it's more on visualization so if i just want to show the client quickly how the revit mep generates the ducting the piping so i can just generate later uh, layout but in uh, designing most of the time i just use the manual uh, routing of my ducting and piping Okay, so I can have a full control on how my design will look like. Okay, but let me just show you the generate layout. So I select generate layout. And then you have here uh, three types. So you have network, perimeter, and intersection. Okay, so network, you have six solution here. Okay. So this is how it looks like. So after you select the solution that you want, so you can just select uh, finish layout. Okay, so you can select finish layout. Okay, so this is how it looks like. It looks sucks, right? So it's not that good. So I just select close here. So in 3D view, it looks like this. Okay, it's not look good, right? Okay. <laughs> anyway, so... That's how you generate it, generate the layout uh, automatically. Now, going back to my one dash shilling Mac, so I'm going here. So this one doesn't have a system yet, right? So this one, we created the system manually. So if you're going to click one of the air terminal, you will not be able to see here the dock system again because it's already has a system, okay? Now, but this one... I can still create a system, but I'm not going to use that option. So what I'm going to do is I'll create it automatically. So, so to create it, I'm going to select. So meaning I'm just going to lay out my ducting automatically. Okay. I'm going to lay out my ducting automatically. Uh, I mean manually to create my routing. Okay. So, I'm going to select now the equipment for this one. I click the equipment and then this, once you generate the dock, automatically it will create the system based on that connector. So, this connector is supply. So, if I click this one, so automatically this dock will become a supply system, will be placed, okay? Because you also have the ability to automatically create systems manually, okay? So you just need to simply connect the, the simply connect the supply dock to any diffuser and watch it become part of that system, okay? So let's say I'm just going to create it somewhere here. So that is my dock and then I select modify. Now, I want to connect these air terminals to my duct here. So, to do that, I can do it uh, manually to create the duct. But, I have this uh, very good option, very good tool. I select one air terminal. So, you see there's a layout panel. So, there's an option here, connect into. So, I'm going to select connect into. I click this one. 
and then I select here. There you go. So in 3D view, it looks like this. Right? Okay. So I select this one, connect into, click the dock. Select, connect into, click the dock. Select, connect into, click the dot. Select, connect into, click the dot. Select, connect into, click the dot. Okay? So now, let's say for example, oh, I don't want this type of dock. I don't want this uh, rectangular dock, mitered elbow stops type of dock. So what I want is like this. I want a flexible dock. No problem. So to do that, to change this to flexible dock is... From the systems tab, there is an option here, convert to flex dock. So I'm going to select convert to flex dock. And then I click now the air terminal. Click the air terminal. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. There you go. Okay. And then I select modify. Now, so you will notice my dock here is open. Let me just go back again to my uh, ceiling mech. Okay, so it's open. So I'm going to select this one. And then there's an option here. Cap open ends. So this is a very nice feature because before in older version of Revit, so you need to play separately the end cap for your dock. Now you are now able to select this to place it automatically, right? To close your dock. Okay, there you go. So that's how you create. And then, like what I have said, if you click now your air terminal, so you can see the system, right? Okay, so automatically, it becomes supply uh, system. Once you connect that to a duct, so it will become a supply based on the connector. Your duct is supply air, right? Okay. So in 3D view, it looks like this. So that's why I always prefer the manual thing because you have a, a full control on how to design your ducting. Same with your piping, same with your uh, sanitary, your plumbing, your hydronic system. So it would be better if you just uh, create it manually, the ducting. Okay? And then it will create you automatically the system once you connect your dock or pipe to a uh, equipment or to another pipe or to an air terminal which has an uh, connector okay all right so hopefully you can follow and another thing that i want to discuss is when you use after the system browser another thing that you need to check about so, before you jump in and start creating systems, just like what we did, you, you may also check out the mechanical settings. So, where is this mechanical settings? Mechanical settings can be found on your systems tab. You see this one? There's an arrow there. So, that's the mechanical settings. So, you can also type MS. Okay? So, you need to set up some several things to ensure that the systems work as they should. So you can modify your uh, mechanical system before before you jump into creating system. All right. So I select this one. Anyway, it's already set up. So I just want to uh, show you some options here. So there is nothing wrong with the default settings, but every firm is different. Okay. So like your company. So each has its own standards, procedures, and design requirements. So most companies have developed their own standards and endeavor to, ad to adhere to various industry standards. And it is important to review the settings in the template carefully first. Okay. So this is now your mechanical system. So let me just go ahead and uh, discuss some of the options here. So several settings really affect the systems graphically. For example, by choosing the hidden line, okay, you see inside gap. Okay, so there's an inside gap here, outside gap, and single line. Okay, by default, each of these is like this, 1 over 64 of an inch or 0.5 mm. So by changing the numeric size of each one of these parameters, you can get, a different look that 
helps match your existing standards okay so you can just go ahead and change this one if you want okay and another thing that you can modify here is you can also set up your doc system so from the doc settings okay so doc settings allows you to customize the annotation sizes the suffixes prefixes and size separators so you can modify from here okay so angles so what about the angles so here you can specify to use any angle select an angle increment to be used or select to confine the design to specific angles only so use angle all right so you can modify this one so for the conversion so this section is for setting the standard duct type and offset parameters for main and branch runs, okay? As well as the flex duct type and maximum flex length allowed, okay? So you can modify from here. You can also change here the default uh, duct type, okay? Whenever you generate your ducting automatically, so you can modify from here, okay? So, for rectangular, oval, and round, so in each of these, you can specify the standard sizes for your ductwork, whether these sizes should uh, appear in size list, and whether they should be used by Revit when it is automatically sizing the ductwork. So, you can modify this three here, the sizes. So, calculation, here you can see the calculation Revit uses for its uh, duct sizing velocity and pressure drop calculation okay so this is the formula okay right so you have these methods so you just check out this one okay so what uh, so aside from that of, of course you also have the piping so you can just go ahead and check out this one yourself okay so so these are the things that you need to check when you try to modify or create a system in your project. Okay? Alright. So another thing is, uh, what else? So if I'm going to select one of the air terminals, so you can also check the properties here. System classification. Okay? Okay. It's from, uh, you can check it from the properties. Okay, so that's it. So hopefully you learned something from this video. Okay, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can put it on the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And you can also share this to your friend. Uh, be one of my subscribers. So I will always have this... Uh, you know, if I have a lot of subscribers, then I will always create a new video for you. Okay? <laughs> okay, just tell it to your friends. And once again, this is Rich from Learning with Rich. You all stay beautiful and handsome. Bye-bye.